of winter has thrown you into shock it's time you asked yourself what are you waiting for you can pay for your new gas heating equipment right on your monthly gas bill and finance it with no money down through washington gas with no payments until june 1991 get warmer call washington gas at 703-941-HEAT today for two years i waited for mike tyson then Buster Douglas would come out of nowhere and flatten him. They said Buster got a good left jab and a big right hand, and that would make him the champ. I said it was luck. We'll see. Douglas versus Holyfield for the heavyweight title. It's the moment of truth, and the truth is gonna hurt. Exclusively on pay-per-view and closed-circuit TV. Another strong first period from the Washington Capitals. Looking again, very powerful on their power play. They score again with the extra man, take a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes of action here at the Capitol Center as they lead the New Jersey Devils. And welcome back to Capitals Hockey on Home Team Sports. I'm Al Koken, and as always, joined by Capitals General Manager David Poyle. So obviously, when Jeff Cortnall and Scott Stevens left the team, you knew your power play would be equally potent, right? <laughs> Well, it's uh, been really a, a pleasant surprise in the season because uh, all of last year we really uh, struggled on our power play. It was one of the areas that uh, we seemed to work so hard, and if we would have been able to come up with uh, some more power play goals, it uh, could have been a, a lot uh, more successful regular season. Uh, this year it's been uh, the strongest part of our, our game, and uh, you know we get another goal here in the first period on the power play, and it's, uh, it's a big lift to the team. The team looks uh, a little hungrier tonight as well. Uh, the 17 shots that they put in, on Chris Terry in that first period, and I know it was guys like Dino Cicerelli really shooting the puck more, people really going out there, putting the puck on the net and putting some pressure against Terry. Well, I think there's a fair bit of uh, pressure on our hockey club. Uh, you know, going into last night's game, we were 0-4 in the Patrick Division. Uh, we beat the Islanders last night. It wasn't uh, a work of art by any uh, means, but uh, it was a victory, and sometimes you, you need that to get over the hump. The, the Devils are... Uh, currently the number one team in the Patrick Division. We've already lost to them once, and uh, I think the players realize that the games in the Patrick Division uh, could ultimately determine where you're going to finish in the regular season standings, and we've, uh, we've got to win a game like tonight. Uh, we go on the road for, uh, for five games, so it's, uh, it's a big game for us. David will take your phone calls at area code 301-499-6600, and let's head to the phones right now. Our first caller, Alan from Centerville. Good evening. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Poirot, my question to you is, um, with all the young goaltending talent within the organization in Rivnik, Kozig, uh, Simpson, and Defoe, do the Capitals plan on trading any of that talent to bolster some of the weakness of the team? And a quick comment is uh, I have a vote for Mr. Forge and Koken. Thank you very much. Yeah. As far as the, the goaltending, uh, I, I really think we have a situation where we can uh, build a, a long and a bright future in the Capitals' goaltending. Right now, I am very happy with uh, Mike Lute and Don Beaupre, uh, two of the more veteran goaltenders in the National Hockey League. Uh, I, I say uh, uh, publicly that I'd like to see them play the next couple of years. Uh, they would probably say to me they'd like to play the next uh, several year, years, but uh, I think we've got an ideal situation, for example, where uh, Byron Defoe's in junior, uh, Jim Rivnax in, in Baltimore, and we've got Ole Kolzig down the Eastern League in, in Hampton. All three are number one goaltenders. All three are getting a lot of ice time. I think with uh, goaltenders, as you see with Liut and Beaupre, who are now uh, Hollywood is into his 30s and uh, Donnie's 29. They can play a lot longer than forwards and defensemen. And uh, I think we, uh, you know, in the next couple of years, this should give us a good uh, chance for everybody to develop and uh, also learn from these guys. Also, it seems like a guy that uh, should also be mentioned is Dwayne Dirksen, who uh, won an 
NCAA championship last year as the number one goaltender at Wisconsin, somebody I know you also consider a bright prospect. Yeah, we sure do. Uh, again, we've made uh, goaltending a, a priority as far as our, our drafting on the last uh, two or three years, and uh, we hope to uh, reap the, the fruits of those drafts uh, in the near future. Bob from Benedict, Maryland. Good evening. You're our next caller. Thank you. Mr. Poirot, a few years back there was a lot of hoopla about Rod Langway being signed to a contract for life with the Capitals. Now the papers say he's playing out his option <laughs> year. Uh, do the Caps have any intentions and have they made any plans for keeping Rod Langway in the organization after he hangs up his skates? I was hoping you wouldn't remember that one. <laughs> what we uh, did at that time is uh, we, we uh, set a whole series of options uh, in Rod's contract, which in this case can can trigger in and uh, if 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 we want them to or rod wants them to uh, we've also talked to rod about uh, after he finishes playing if uh, you know he might possibly work in the organization right now again uh, i think uh, rod would acknowledge that our uh, relationship and our rapport is uh, uh, you know we're right together on that and at this time he just wants to play out his his option and then uh, decide to what he wants to do in relationship with what we want to do at the end of the season Remember uh, when uh, Whitey Herzog was uh, had told by Gussie Bush that he'd give you a lifetime contract. <laughs> Herzog wanted to know whose lifetime, <laughs> mine or yours. <laughs> Is that one of those deals with these lifetime contracts? Oh, uh, it's uh, like I say, it was. I remember that day, and uh, uh, the, the caller is very, very uh, perceptive. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Laurel and Dave. Good evening. How you doing? My question is for Mr. Poyle. With uh, Stevens getting an enormous salary increase with his move. It appeared Hatcher subsequently refused to come to play unless he got a salary increase commensurate with his perception of his abilities in comparison to Stevens. Hatcher was legally bound to play under a valid contract. My question is this, when a player is legally obligated to play for an agreed sum, but then simply says, I won't play unless I get more money, what good are contracts? Well, that's the uh, that's the million dollar question. <laughs> you know, literally, to, to literally, uh, it's a you know it's a tough situation. I mean, you you see this, and uh, uh, I guess I, I was going to say different walks of life, but it seems to be predominant in in sports. I mean, uh, again, I can't tell tell you what to do or how to run run your life or uh, what to do with your your obligations. Uh, with uh, you know Kevin, uh, you know we've. Uh, you know, we've uh, renegotiated his contract a couple of times, and uh, you know, it was our intention to do that uh, this this summer, and uh, we just didn't get uh, together, and there was a disagreement on that. So it's uh, it's tough. I'm on management. He's a player. The the uh, salary situation in the National Hockey League has uh, changed uh, quite a bit, and uh, you know, I I just hope we get it resolved. You know, I find this a you know a tough question to to talk about because everybody uh, uh, you know makes their own decisions in life and what what's right and what's wrong. But it does make things difficult, though, when you when you start renegotiating, just in general, because it, it does it send. Is it the message you want to send to your players in either the positive or ne negative, in the sense that if you clamp down and say we won't do it, then that seems to upset them. But if you do do it, then everybody seems to to want to do the same thing. Well, that's right, and I certainly uh, agree with that. I mean, the, the most important part is that you want, uh, if at all possible, the players to uh, think that you're treating them fairly. And I think this is where these holdout situations come about when a player doesn't feel that he's being treated fairly. And again, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, management and the players sometimes, you know, have disagreements on, on their value, on their contribution, and uh, these things develop. Uh, hopefully, uh, in this case, as other things have happened in the past, uh, we'll get beyond this and uh, we'll look back at this as just a temporary uh, blemish on Kevin and uh, our relationship and on uh, his career because he certainly is a, is a fine player. Another phone call, Robert from Owen. Good evening. Um, I have a question. Um why did they dump the puck in the corner? Well, they dump the puck in the corner usually because that's the uh, the best entry they have into the other team's zone. If you uh, watch closely, and some sometimes uh, they, uh, a player might be all by himself. Say it's Mike Ridley coming down the, the middle, and uh, he doesn't have his wingers uh, with him. Uh, the New Jersey will have two defensive back, maybe even in a one or two forwards. Well, if he tries to go buy them, deke them, or, or what have you, and turns over the puck at that point, when all of our people are rushing up the ice, including the defensemen, all of a sudden uh, you're going to put us in a very bad position defensively. So you've got to, uh, you know, use your, your head, if you will, and if there's no other play, you can't make a good play, you've got to dump it in and make them go back and uh, hopefully get a little pressure on them to, to make a mistake. Well, on that note, we'll dump it out of here. Thank David Poyle for visiting us once again, and we'll return with more intermission activity here at the Capitol Center after these words on home team sports. Now, now how are we going to get there? It'll be great to see the guys again. I wonder if they'll all show. I just got to get there. I'm trying to make...
my way back to the Brackendale River. Friends deserve the best. This is great. They all showed up. The crisp, clean taste of Canada's best beer, Labette's Blue. What took you so long? I had a little car trouble. Between friends, it's true blue, Labette's Blue. I love your new kitchen. Who did it? Sears did it. All of it? Even the new windows in the patio door. And the fence around the patio. Yeah, they gave us a free estimate, their famous satisfaction guarantee, even the financing. Ah, oh, you two always know the best deals. Ah, oh, Sears is the best deal I've heard of tonight. <laughs> Sears Home Improvements. Professionally installed, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. Sears Home Improvement Professionals. The most trusted name around the house. to change the oil. Don't forget to change the oil. Does a computer work? I think it has powers inside of it. Powers? Powers to make it, to make the screen do something. Well, how does Giant's Apples for the Students program work? You need to give your teacher pink receipts. Okay, you collect pink receipts from Giant. And then what happens? You give them to Giant, and then I think Giant delivers a computer. of Washington Capitals hockey is brought to you by Labatt's, the clean, crisp, imported taste of Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one beer. It's Blue Heaven. By your nearby Sears home installed home professionals, the most trusted name around the hubs. And by Safeway. Come see the difference at Safeway. We play 20 minutes. The Washington Capitals with a solid 20 minutes of play. Well deserved. The 2 0 first period lead. Welcome back here on Home Team Sports. I'm Jeff Rimmer along with Craig Lachlan. And Craig, uh, your impressions of that first period? The Capitals came out and carried the play to the Devils. I think they did. I think the first 10 or 12 minutes they played exceptionally well. Near the end of the period, they let the Devils have a few chances. But just remember, the Caps were on the power play quite a bit of that period. A lot of penalties that period. And I think that set the tone of the game. The Devils now have to try to climb out of a 2 0 deficit. Well, let's take a look at the shot totals for the Washington Capitals. A total of 17 that they peppered towards uh, Chris Torreri. Well, yes. And one thing to note here, all the shots from the right side, Dino Cicerelli with five of them, but the two goals from the left side. So maybe that's telling us something about Terreri. And first of all, John Drew starts it off for the Capitals. Now we have it set up here. The Devils have the play pretty well shut down because it's a three on three because there's another Capital coming up the wing here. But what they do is they make a two on two, which is the hardest play in hockey. Stop. Stop it. Marcinician takes out Bondra here. Druce is eliminated by Danico. The other players are over here. They've got each other. But it's a breakdown by the Devils because John Druce misses a check from Danico. Marcinician takes Bronda. He taps it to Druce. Now, the thing about here is Druce is on his left wing with a right shot. The goalie's down, puts a top shelf right over Terreri. Capitals on the so Capitals second goal. A good play here. We've got Johansson on the point, forcing the Devils to slide out to try to block him. And he cuts the seam of the four penalty killers. Throws it to Hunter. Hunter, I think, is really going far side, but he goes short side on Terreri off the post and into the net for a 2-0 lead for the Caps. Interesting point of that first period. The Washington Capitals controlling it most of the way. In fact, with seven minutes left in the first period, they had a 16-4 shot advantage. But the Devils finished strong and ended the period with, what, 15 shots? Yes, they did. The Caps opened it up a little bit, but then again, the Devils had a few more power plays. They got a, quite a few shots all spread out in the zone but you can notice they're all out over the top of the circles that gives Dom de Beaupre the chance to stop him only three shots really in tight teams are back on the ice let's quickly get down to Al Coke at ice level Al 
All right, thank you, Jeff. Watching the Capitals come out on the ice, I do not see John Juice, do not see Alan May at this point. So we'll try and get further word about their availability the rest of this hockey game. You talk about the capital shots and the five from Dino Cicerelli. I was talking to Dino before the game and watching him work on his sticks. He had a piece of tape on his sticks and was putting the letters STP to remind himself, shoot the puck. He certainly did it with five shots on goal and plenty of good scoring chances. I think you can say thing about the rest of his teammates as well as they peppered Chris Ferreri that first period. Let's head back upstairs now to Craig Lachlan and Jeff River. Thanks, Al. And certainly Dino Cicerelli looking for goal number two on the year, and it's not from a lack of effort. Uh, Dino Cicerelli's a goal scorer, and you know what he wants to do most of all is contribute offensively, Craig. Well, he sure does, and what happens is you don't score for a couple of games, you start to press, but the key is you've got to keep working hard, but you can't let it get to you. They're going to come for Dino Cicerelli. He's a natural goal scorer. He's got five shots his first period. If he keeps getting those type of numbers and shots, he's going to score. We are just about set for the face-off. Bill McCreary getting word from the goal judges that they are set to go. And so, too, are the Washington Capitals and the New Jersey Devils. And Dino Cicerelli, getting back to him, he also puts a lot of pressure on him because he knows he's the goal scorer for the Caps. And when the team loses, they look for those type of guys to step forward. When you're winning, you win as a team. You're not really worried about who scores the goal. Ridley, Miller. And Stephen Leach up front for the Capitals. Or actually, that is Bob Rouse. Uh, the teams at this point now with the Capitals. Still 30 seconds left in the penalty to ride Langway. So the Devils are still on the power play. As Terreri comes out and tees it up for his defenseman driver. Driver, forward pass. Muller, he gets to Abilene, and it's offside. Cruising in on the left wing, John McClain ahead of the puck carrier. That's the offside call with now 12 seconds left. Well, Peter Stassi, very good on the power play. They call it the United Nations here in New Jersey. They've got Czechoslovakian players. They've got Russians. they got Swedes, Vince. They've got a real, a real group of different type of players. And Peter Stassi came in. He knows six languages, Jeff, so he's a smart man. Six languages, he can speak to them, and he's a real liaison between those type of players that don't really understand English and the coaches. Well, certainly more and more of an influence in the National Hockey League of the European players, and I'm sure that will continue. Along the right boards, McLean gets it in deep to Stastny. Stastny to McLean as Langway steps back out onto the ice. Teams are at full strength. Devils controlling the puck in the Washington end. Hatcher, the long lead pass there for Kelly Miller. Miller fires it on the left wing for Ridley. Ridley misses a check there from McLean, looking for Kelly Miller, but back comes Stastny, and he clears it to center. Lawler for the Capitals. Back hands it to Kelly Miller. Miller being chased by McLean. McLean carries it in over the Washington line. Dropping a pass for Shanahan. Beaupre gets a piece of it. It's off into the corner. Kelly... Miller doing his job, tying up Shanahan in front, back come the Capitals. Both teams change on the fly, Tippett misses a check there from Danico. Marcin Ischik gets it back to the point, and offside was the call. 18.38 here in the second period, caps ahead 2-0. Danico, very fortunate to get a piece of Tippett, or Tippett would have had a breakaway. Peter Bond, I still think, very happy after that first National Hockey League goal. He's a little spark plug out there, he likes to run around, very good skater, very good balance, and he turns very quick. He's like those Europeans. It took me a, quite a big radius to turn, Jeff, but that bonder, he can turn on a dime. Great hockey player. Uh, it's going to take him some time adjusting, certainly to the North American ice, but the Capitals feel that he can make a contribution offensively. And a surprise starter for the Caps this season. Many expect them to start the year in Baltimore. Kelly Johansson flips it to the opposite side. Lawler centering pass there for Bondra. Bondra doing a little bit of stick handling there to get the puck into the zone. Tippett takes a hard check, centers it for Bondra, but Terreri right there and holds on. Dave Tippett taking a hard check along the boards. He's shaking that one off. As we get a look at Chris Terreri, Sean Burke not with the team. Roland Mullinson is the backup. Burke has not practiced since early in the week. A knee injury not believed to be serious. 
But Peter McNabb, the analyst on the Devils telecast on Sports Channel, indicating to us that uh, maybe the injury is a lot more serious than the Devils are letting on to the media. So we may, we may see a lot of Terrari here now, particularly now as the Devils go on an extended trip, much like the Capitals to the West. Well, whenever there's an injury, teams don't like to tell everybody what exactly happened to their players. They want to keep it, you know, they want to keep it under their belt just for them to know. They don't want everybody in the league knowing that Sean Burke might have a serious injury. So nobody really knows about Sean Burke. All we know is he's not in the lineup. Of course, that wasn't the problem for you. You never got injured. <laughs> Iron Man, right? <laughs> well, I guess you could call me that, Jeff. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Face off to Terreri's right. Caps win the draw. Lawler gets it to Cicerelli, who feeds Pavanka. Kazatanov intercepting. With Zezel standing in front of Terreri. Puck cleared by Eisbart. Off into the op opposite corner. Padubny turning around the Capitals defenseman. From behind the net. Mailey kicks it ahead. Now turns from Rouse. Steps in front. Bopre is down. Gets a piece of it the top into the opposite corner. Long lead pass for Pavanka. He's ridden off by Kazatanov. Fetisov also there to tie up Pavanka. And Fetisov clears it for Eisbar. Off the glass, up into the photographer's booth here, next to the penalty box. And there's a break, so we'll step aside. We'll be back with more here in the second period. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Dennis Butler with Lewis Rich. And I'm Ron Ovajeski with the Basic Food Center stores. Lewis Rich and Basic Food Center are proud to recognize for the second straight year the academic and athletic achievements of the area's top high school football players by presenting the Lewis Rich High School Player of the Week. Now, meet this week's winner. Nigel Garris accounted for each of Good Counsel's four touchdowns last week on his way to 254 yards. Congratulations to Nigel Garris, this week's Lewis Rich High School Player of the Week. Jeff Rimmer, Craig Lachlan, and Al Koken back here at the Capitol Center. We're in the second period. The Capitals lead on goals by Drews and Hunter. 2-0 with 17-39 left to go in period two. Well, Terry Murray going head-to-hand -head at offensive line against the Devils defensive line. Hopefully they can get something going against this tough checking line. Terreri leaving it there for Al Valine. He gets it to Driver. Back to Adelaide. On the left wing for Boschman. Cicerelli takes a hard hit in front of the Capitals bench. Puck comes back to Driver, who feeds it to Crowder off his stick. Kelly Johansson puts it off into the opposite corner. Abilene. From the corner, unable to get the puck. He goes back, regroups again. Terreri tips it to him. And here's a centering pass for Boschman with Crowder and Stewart. Puck flipped into the Washington end. Cleared by Johansson off the board. Boschman moving in. Again, it's regained by Johansson, who gets it ahead to Cicerelli. Devils starting to throw their weight around. Here's Zezel with Cicerelli. Streaking the net. Zezel winds up. Save made by Terreri. The rebound is held on as Cicerelli takes a cross check. And we'll wait to see what uh, Bill McCurry, the referee, has to say. Cicerelli and Crowder have words. I guess McCreary didn't think a penalty was warranted, but we'll get a look uh, here at the cap scoring chance. Well, Peter Zezel, he holds the puck, he holds the puck, waits till everybody goes to net, and then he takes a hard drive, stopped by Terreri, right in his chest. Dino Cicerelli cruising through that slot, looking for a rebound, gets knocked down by Bruce Driver. The key here is Peter Zezel, he's a veteran, he holds it, he holds it, he waits till the Dino Cicerelli's going to the net, lets a hard shot go off Dino Cicerelli, Terreri stops it. Ridley, Miller. Leach up front with Langway and Hatcher on the blue line. Stastny with Muller and McLean. Big offensive thrust here for the New Jersey Devils. Langway pinches in, fires a drive. Knocked down in front. Leach gets it for the Capitals. For the far boards. Try to set up Ridley behind the net. Puck comes back to the point. Again, a shot by Langway. Those new metal sticks. Firing that puck for Langway. <laughs> Here's Muller dropping a pass for McLean. McLean tied up by Kelly Miller. Very effective checking there by the Capitals' left winger. They tie up along the boards. Puck comes loose to Muller. He winds up and it goes wide. Langway turning away from Muller. Getting it on the right wing for Leach. Leach with Ridley and Miller at center. Puck fired into the corner. Danico and Miller chase after it. Ridley. Moving in, he has the puck, and he gets it to Leach. 
Leach missing the check there from Stastny. From behind the net, McLean with a backhander off the glove of Rouse and back into the neutral zone. Rouse tips it for Lawler inside the Caps' blue line. He clears it all the way to center. McLean steps up, dumps it back in. But quickly, Lawler has it back up. Ahead to Leach. Leach on the near side. Bumped off on the play by Danico. Hard check thrown there by Kiprios. Here's Hunter setting up behind the net to Kiprios. He tips it back to the point. Lawler fires it off into the corner. Here's Hunter being chased by Marcinician. Puck comes to Kiprios, and his backhand goes wide. Rouse pinches in, hops over Kiprios' stick to Hunter. He has trouble, gets it back to the point, but it's intercepted by Muller. Muller and McLean, long shift for this line. They finally make their way to the Devils bench. Both teams changing on the fly. Here's Rouse. Ahead to Lawler. Lawler with a backhand to Kiprios. Off his stick into the corner. Casatano flips it back. Hunter is right there. Dale Hunter ridden off by Sundstrom. One of the Devils, Kazatanov, loses his edge, but still gets back to his feet in a hurry and has the puck at the blue line. He leads the attack to center. In over the Washington line. Shot by Kazatanov. Blocked there by Beaupre, and it's off into the corner. All the way here to Bondra. Two on one. Here's Bondra with Kiprios. Too far. Kiprios slides it off into the corner. Bondra's got it again. Peter Bondra back to the point to Hatcher. Hatcher stops it, fires a shot wide. Petisov on the near boards. Leading the Devils' attack to center. Fatisov in over the line. Gets by Pavanka. Callie Johansson flips it back. And back into the New Jersey end it goes. The Devils regroup. Well, Bondra and Kiprios out there a long time. And you're coming down on a two-on-one. Kiprios was too tired to catch up with the play. And he just wanted to get off the ice. Here's Kazutana right in front of his net. He passes it there to Albali. Albali ahead to Lemieux who backhands it ahead to Shanahan. Ridden off there was Kelly Johansson behind the Washington net. Back come the Capitals. Pavaka with Kiprios and Zezel. Here's a shot directed towards the net. Rouse takes a hit. Zezel is turned around. Still gets the puck free to Pavaka. Along the right wing boards for Cicerelli. He misses a check there from Maley. Caps keep it in. But it's backhanded by Pavaka to Eisbart. Eisbart moving in with Pavaka in over the line. Looking, and it's blocked right there by Lawler with a good defensive play in front of Don Beaupre, and he quickly gets it back into the neutral zone. Fans very appreciative of that defensive play by Mike Lawler. Here's Bailey from the right faceoff circle, a drive. Again, that one blocked by Beaupre to the point. Driver dumps it back in behind the net. Podubny turned around by Rouse. He's got some help there. Eisbart for the Devils. Turns, skates towards the net, gets it to Maley off his stick, tipped by a capital, and down the ice. Here's Pavaka with Cicerelli. And it was quickly cleared ahead by Driver. Capitals with Pavaka, Cicerelli, and Driver. Right there, and a good defensive play there by the New Jersey Devils defenseman. Now Eisbard on the near side. Dumps the puck into the Washington end. Here's Hunter. Leading the Capitals attack to Kelly Johansson. Along the right wing for Bondra. Marcinician rides him off into the boards along the far boards. Crowder is there. He turns away from Dave Tippett to Danico. And Danico wraps it off the boards and down the ice. Well, Terry Murray double-shifting Bonder. He was just out there. He only had a one-shift rest. He throws him back out with another line because he's skating hard, and Terry Murray sees that he's creating some things out there. He's going to give him a little more ice time. Puck cleared along the boards. Puck kept in by Felix. Off into the opposite corner. Marcinician backhands it. To Crowder, rink wide. Intercepted there by Kelly Miller, who misses a check and gets it to Bondra. Bondra firing a shot. Glove high in the air by Terreri, and he holds on with Kelly Miller awaiting the rebound. 11.42 left to go here in the second period. The Washington Capitals leading the Devils 2-0. If the chill of winter has thrown you into shock, it's time you asked yourself, what are you waiting for? You can pay for your new gas heating equipment right on your monthly gas bill and finance it with no money down through Washington Gas with no payments until June 1991. Get warmer. Call Washington Gas at 703-941-HEAT today. 
Mecca, Terry Murray on the Caps bench. He leads 2 0, but it's got to be concerned. His bench a little shorter right now, Craig Lockwood, without Alan May and John Drews, who have both not returned, and we're still waiting an update on their condition. Well, they're both right wingers, and that's why you're going to see Bonder out there quite a bit more tonight. He's going to get lots of ice time. With two right wingers gone, Bonder's going to have to step forward and play that right wing. Peter Stastny for the Capitals. Backhands it right out of the stick of Rod Langway. Langway feeding ahead to Ridley with Kelly Miller. Here's Ridley directing it towards the net. Goes off into the corner. Muller throws a check at Miller, but he comes up with a puck and he looks for Ridley in front. Kirk Muller. Skating away from Ridley and puts it right onto the net. Terrari has got to go to his knees and holds on. Oh, Muller, very frustrated. Ridley all over him, hooking him and grabbing him, not letting him get skating. When Muller skates, he's very dangerous. But Ridley, really checking. You know, he uses his stick so well, you're allowed to give a little hook, a little pull. And it really frustrates those guys that like to skate and freewheel out there. Kelly Miller and Mike Ridley, certainly one of the premier penalty-killing units in the National Hockey League. And at even strength, they can do the job defensively and offensively. They sure can. And Ridley really taking them in, forcing them in, forcing them in, keeping on them and just pestering them. Pestering them to force a turnover in front. He doesn't. Prairie just puts his glove on it. 11-14 remaining here in the second period. The Washington Capitals leading the first place New Jersey Devils here in the Patrick Division. Both these teams want very much to win this hockey game tonight. That was the the modus operandi going in tonight. Both clubs going on extended road trips. The Devils will continue on the island on Tuesday, then have a home game later in the week against Buffalo, but then they go west, as do the Washington Capitals, who are starting a five-game road trip after tonight's game. Kazatanov gets it ahead on the right wing. This is Eisbart. Eisbart, next Utica Devil, 53 goals last year to lead the American Hockey League. Along the far boards, Podubny. Tied up by the Capitals' defense. Rouse gets it to Zezel. Peter Zezel turns. Lawler throws a hit. Here it comes in front. Tipped ahead there by Beaupre. He gets it to Pavaca. Pavaca looking for a streaking Dino Cicerelli. And it almost clipped. Maley turns from Zezel. Tipped ahead there by Pavaca. Petisov skates him off. And clears it ahead to Podubny. In over the line. Podubny fires a shot. It's blocked. By Lawler, the puck comes loose. Love there by Beaupre. He sees through the traffic and holds on. Stay tuned, Caps lead 2-0. We're off and running again at Marlboro Racetrack. Two Wednesdays of thoroughbred racing. October 24th and 31st. Ten big races, post time, 12 noon. And it's at 11 a on the Capitol Beltway. Don't miss the excitement at Marlboro. Remember, that's October 24th and the 31st. And a look at John Cuniff, the New Jersey coach, uh, whose team is out shooting the Washington Capitals here in the second period by a 4-2 count as we approach the midway point of the hockey game and this second period. Much different than the first period, but the Devils still trailing 2 to nothing. Hunter and Sundstrom for the honors. Hunter wins the draw. Gets it behind the net for Kevin Hatcher. Caps defenseman clears it in to the New Jersey end. Kiprios moves up for the Capitals. He's ridden off on the play. Abilene gets it ahead to Sundstrom. Sundstrom in over the Washington line. Feeds it, but it was intercepted by a good defensive play there by Kiprios, who tips it to Hatcher, and the Caps clear the zone. Off the boards, racing after it there is Bondra, but Abilene is first to get it. Long left wing pass. Shanahan feeds Claude Lemieux. Lemieux in over the line, fires a drive way wide. The rebound coming all the way to the left point, and it's steered right back in behind the Washington net. Beaupre coming out, trying to help his defenseman. Shanahan's got it on the far boards. Backhands it off into the open corner. Johansson. Skating away from Lemieux, who takes a slash from Lemieux. Play goes right on. Here's Shanahan's drive. Deflected. Off into the corner. Johansson clears it, but not out. Shanahan knocks it down. Tips it up to Lemieux, and his drive goes way wide. Sundstrom beating Lemieux again. This shot is blocked by the Capitals' defense. 
Moving into Sundstrom. Glove there by Beaupre, who's very sharp tonight. And again, he holds on. Don Beaupre. The Capitals a little bit sloppy in their own zone. They're trying to clear it, make that nice pass, rather than get the puck and just fire it out. Al Koken is standing by. Nice level. He's got some updates on the Washington Post scoreboard. Al? All right, thanks, Jeff. Let's run down those scores for you on the Washington Post scoreboard. The Islanders and Buffalo still tied at one. That game now in the second period. The Rangers on a Mike Gartner goal. A 1-0 lead over Pittsburgh in the first. Two Joe Sackett goals led Quebec today over Detroit. Toronto looking for their first win. A 1-0 lead over Chicago early in that game at Maple Leaf Gardens. Montreal with a 1-0 lead over Philadelphia. And Calgary early. 3-0 over Boston. Remember, Boston lost big last night in Edmonton. And in the World Series, a Carney Lansford RBI single has given Oakland a 1-0 lead in the second inning as Oakland tries to stay alive. Back upstairs to Jeff and Craig. Well, I think the <laughs> Oakland A's led last night. What's this now? What's that Oakland A's cap coming out of your briefcase for? <laughs> Cincinnati still leads the series 3-0. Put still, it away. I'm still jumping on the wagon. I bet. Play underway. Caps in the New Jersey end. Leach battles off Danico with one hand and then fires a shot right at Terreri. Good effort there by Stephen Leach. Boy, Mike Gartner, your ex-teammate here in Washington, off to a terrific start with the Rangers. He sure is. He's a good goal for He's getting lots of chances to score in New York with that power play they have. A lot of players these days are now using this aluminum stick. Mike Ridley, he started a, with the Capitals. He's been using it for a long time. A lot of players. Langway, this is his first year using aluminum stick. It's a very stiff shaft, and you get off some very hard shots. You're wondering how many goals Gartner has now? Eight. Eighth goal here tonight. Ridley. From behind the net, being chased by Marcinician. Mike Ridley clears it ahead, but Stastny is there for the Devils. He backhands it off his skate. Marcinician now tries to clear, but Kelly Miller intercepts. Miller along the near boards, off Leach. Caps doing a great job forechecking here. The New Jersey end, Ridley's got it. Mike Ridley from the faceoff circle turns to Rod Langway, and Rod forced to come all the way back into the neutral zone. Marcinician. Getting it ahead, Stastny to Muller with a drive off Don Beaupre. The rebound knocked down by Langway and cleared from in front of the Washington net. Caps really playing as a team tonight. And it shows. Puck cleared in as the Caps change on the go. Puck touched by Marcinician and a faceoff back in the Washington end. Dave Marcinician, who spent most of last year with the Utica Devils in the American Hockey League, expected to add some size and I guess uh, some strength on that blue line. Well, he's out there for one purpose. He's a big, strong kid, played in Utica, gets a lot of penalty men. He takes the body, and that's what they're missing. You know, with the two Soviets, Kazatonov, Fedosov out there, they're more finesse players. They like to pass the puck around, and they think in this division, division especially with Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, the Caps, they need a tough, demanding defenseman out there. And he fits the role. He's in and out of the lineup with Wine Rich, two federal offensively. It really depends what team you play against. Your buddy, uh, Lou Lamorello, the general manager of the Devils, uh, felt after last season one area that they had to upgrade was the toughness on the defense. And this is why this kid's getting a chance, I would say. That's exactly right. As long with the forwards, too. You know, Lemieux and Boschman, they add a new dimension to this team. Lawler backhands it off the glass. Puck kept in, but it was offside as it was backhanded back in with several members of the Devils still in the Washington zone. 7.55 remaining here. And the Devils, uh, who were way down in that first period as far as shots are concerned, 16 to 4 with seven minutes left, are now ahead of the Capitals, 21 to 20. Lori Bosch, he's a veteran centerman. He's going around the league to be very good in the faceoffs. I think the reason he's really good is I've taken a few faceoffs, Jeff, if you can believe that. But he cheats a lot. He gets a huh. stick in. He's a cagey veteran. He doesn't, you're not sure where he's going to do if he's going to pull it ahead or pull it back. He wins the draw by pulling it back to Kazatanov, who quickly fires it into the Washington end. Caps try to break out. Crowder steps up, gets it ahead to Boschman. Boschman fires a shot towards the net. A weak one goes off into the corner. Petisov pinching in. Boschman dumps it behind the Washington net. Felix is there. And he wraps it along the boards, but it hits referee Bill McCreary. Boschman knocks it down and fires a shot way wide. And the Devils will have to regroup in their own zone. Cicerelli and Fatisa. Wraps sticks. And we'll have to wait and see what the calls are here. We'll take a break. We'll come back and inform you of the penalty. Stay tuned.
stand up, hits him over the eye, gets, hits him a little bit, he's gonna get a high sticking penalty. Dino Cicerelli took a slash at him, they're both gonna get minor penalties, it's gonna be five on five. Petisov and Cicerelli going off for coincidental minors, so no damage done here, 12.40 the time of the penalties, and the teams will remain at full strength. The only problem with that, Jeff, is that the Caps now a little short on right wing. Bondra might have to play the rest of this period. I mean, they've got May out, huh. Bruce out, now Cicerelli. Terry Murray's going to be asking on the bench, who can play right wing for me? Who can play right wing? Craig, sit down. Hey. Don't go. Hey, <laughs> stay here, Greg. <laughs> play underway behind the New Jersey net. This is Abilene. Getting it on the left wing. The Devils clear the zone. Ladovny flips it into the Washington end. Over the stick of Rouse. Bailey tying him up in the corner. Here's Johansson on the backhand to Bondra. Bondra attempts to get it out. Now Hunter does, and he flips it to Bondra. He's playing full strength. Coincidental minors. Cicerelli for slashing. Petisov for high sticking as it's wrapped into the New Jersey end. Abilene clears it off into the open corner. Hunter is right there for the Capitals. Dale Hunter has it taken off his stick by Driver. Driver on the left wing. He feeds it on the left side there for Kadubny. Kelly Johansson gets his man. Buck comes off on the right side. Back come the Capitals. Hunter for Washington. Looking to feed it across the tippet. Intercepted by the Devils. And they clear the zone. Racing after it there is Eisbart. The first back, Kevin Hatcher for the Capitals with 6-10 left. In the second period, Kevin Hatcher flips it into the New Jersey end. Abilene takes it there from Terreri. On the right wing for Sundstrom. Pavaka steps up, intercepting. Also helping out there is Zezel, who gets it to Pavaka. Pavaka ridden off on the play. Claude Lemieux throws a left hook at uh, Pavaka. Play goes right on. Here's Sundstrom to Lemieux. Lemieux flipping the backhander to Shanahan at center. Brendan Shanahan and over the line with Sundstrom and Lemieux. Here's a drive. Tipped by Lemieux and it goes wide. Langway for the Capitals. Carrying it back to center. Caps team captain flips it back into the New Jersey end and Terreri is there. He leaves it. For his defenseman, Marcinician, who gets it ahead to Lemieux. Lemieux at center. In over the line. Drops a pass for Sandstrom, who gets it back to Shanahan and his shot way off into the corner. Rouse to Pavanka, too far. Marcinician with a backhander. Flips it back into the Washington end. Shanahan trying to get around. Lawler, he is tied up there in the caps. Pavanka clears it back into the neutral zone. Both teams checking exceptionally well and keeping the puck along the board. So there's not many chances right in the center zone in either end or the neutral zone. Puck in front of the Washington Net, Danico from the point, gloved there by Beaupre, and he is seeing the puck exceptionally well through all the traffic in front, and he holds on. Don Beaupre making his third start of the young NHL season, and I thought uh, played very well for the Capitals in their first two games. Certainly uh, no reason for the Caps to feed. Yeah, big glove save. He gets his glove out there. The shot's going wide, but really nobody in front of him getting some traffic for him. He can see the puck all the way, and you follow it, just like you're catching a baseball. You follow it right into your glove and make an easy save. And what were you saying that before? Were you saying they're short right-wingers, Jeff? I just remember. You I, said that. I am a right-winger. I forgot all about that. Ah, a little slow on that one. <laughs> I didn't think you were ever slow on anything. <laughs> Not Except on the ice. On the ice. <laughs> all right, this face off to the left of Donnie Beaupre. Good thing we don't have a telephone here. We might get a phone call. Lawler feeding it ahead to Bondra. Petisov pinching in. They tie up on the far boards. Puck comes loose. Centering pass. Looking in front there for Boschman, but he was tied up on the play by Dave Tippett with a good defensive play. Coming back to get his man. Bob Rouse from behind the net. Clears it off the boards and all the way back down and into the New Jersey end. This is Kazatanov. Back hands it. Looking for Crowder. Caps Tippett into the neutral zone. To Hunter. Petisov. Getting it ahead to Crowder. Tippett tying him up. Puck comes back to Fatisov, who feeds it ahead to Boschman. Boschman with Stewart and Crowder. He flips it off on the backhand into the corner. Stewart has it, centers it. But Chris Felix gets it to Hunter. 
Hunter with a high flip pass. Tippett knocks it down. Here's Tippett, one-on-one, -on -one, firing a shot. Terraria pass, save the rebound to Abilene. To Crowder, to Boschman. Boschman with Stewart and Kazutanov. Puts it right onto the stick of Chris Felix, who clears it out of trouble. Abilene on the backhander to Crowder. Takes a check there from Zezel. Puck flipped all the way into the Washington end. Touched there by Felix and icing the call with 3.28 left to go here in period two. And we've got Al downstairs with more out-of-town scores and more updates for us right now. All right, thanks, guys. Buffalo now has jumped ahead of the New York Islanders on the Washington Post scoreboard, 3-1 in the second period. The Rangers have added to their lead, 2-0 over Pittsburgh at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Second period score. One final report, Quebec 5-3 over Detroit. There's Joe Sackett next to two goals. Toronto now is up their lead to 2-0 over Chicago in the second. Philly and Montreal now tied up at one in the first period in Montreal. Calgary has added one. It's a 4-0 lead over Boston. And Minnesota has jumped ahead of St. Louis early in that game, 1-0. And the World Series still second in short with Oakland on top, one zip, back up there. What do you think, Craig, with all the trade talk and the talk of maybe Doug Carpenter's job being in jeopardy? Do you think the Leafs are finally going to put something together and get into the win column? <laughs> I don't know. They, you know, they're playing not bad. They just aren't scoring enough goals. You know, they're not playing very well. And uh, obviously, I think in Toronto, you know as well as I do, the coach seems to be always the first one to go. Easier, as the cliche goes, to change one man than an entire team. Maley carrying the puck into the Washington end, and it's driven by driver way wide. Beaupre is knocked down in front by Maley. He's getting up. Seems to be uh, none the worse for wear. Padubny in over the line. He's got Maley on the right wing. Beaupre leaves it there for Lawler, who gets it ahead but not out. Driver with a shot right at the net. Love there by Beaupre. Cicerelli. To Pavanka with Zezel. Pavanka in over the line. Good defensive play there by Driver to clear the zone. Maley on the backhand. Clears it to Eisbart to Maley. Here's Lawler getting along the boards. Devils trying to keep things in. Fans thinking a penalty should have been called on the, the high stick on Cicerelli. Now we've got uh, referee Bill McCreary with a delayed call. Terreri makes his way in the Capitals will be penalized. Crowder, as the Devils have the extra attacker, trying to get something going here. They get it rink wide for Muller. Muller getting it a pass to Driver. In over the line, Hatcher skating off his man, Sundstrom. It's touched there by Langway, and the Capitals with 2.09 will be forced to kill off a penalty. Dino Cicerelli getting the gate, and the Devils with another power play. Well, I think that's a little bit of frustration setting in into Dino Cicerelli. He gets a cross-checking penalty. He's trying to forge it. He's trying to get in there, hooking and holding him. They know that he's the type of guy that they've got to hold up tonight if they want to have a chance of winning because Dino Cicerelli is a top-notch goal scorer. Two for cross-checking at 17.51 to Dino Cicerelli. But Dino just comes in. After Eisbart goes after him, Eisbart gives him a little hold on his stick, and then he just drives him into the corner. Eisbart gets his stick up, but McCreary saw the cross check just before that. Gets the penalty. Mike Ridley and Peter Stastny are set for this faceoff to the right of Don Beaupre. Stastny wins the draw, but Kelly Miller is right there. The Caps try to clear the zone, unable to do so, and it's steered around along the boards by Don Beaupre, all the way back into the neutral zone. Devils forced to regroup. But Shanahan steps back inside his own blue line with the puck. Shanahan turns from Kelly Miller. Miller and Ridley killing off this penalty for the Capitals. McLean to Shanahan. Fakes a shot in over the line. Hatcher tips it off his stick and he gets it to Ridley. Ridley off the boards and all the way down into the New Jersey end. Danico being chased by Mike Ridley. Along the left wing boards for Kirk Muller, the team captain of the Devils. He gets it rink wide from McLean off his stick and Rod Langway dumps it back in. Terrari leaves it there for Danico. Danico skates to the blue line, flips it on the right side for Shanahan. Cross ice for Danico. In over the line, offside. Peter Stastny way ahead of the puck, thus the offside call. With 1.16 left to go here in period two, 106 left in the penalty to Dino Cicerelli. Brendan Shanahan, Mr. Zeus, they call him in uh, New Jersey. He's a big, strong guy. He's a... Uh, the type of forward that's really turned his game around last year, 30 goals, 
big and strong and an excellent shot. View of the New Jersey Devils bench. The Devils want this season to uh, maybe challenge for that division championship and get the team prepared for the playoffs. And hopefully for the Devils, according to uh, Coach John Cunniff, they won't be easily beaten in the playoffs. But this is a very tough division. As you well know, Craig. <laughs> Driver in over the line. Flips it off into the corner. Tip it. Getting it to Zezel. They tie up along the board. Zezel takes exception to the hit there from Claude Lemieux. Driver. Beating it to Podubny. Sundstrom. Has this pass intercepted by Zezel. Less than a minute to go in the period. 42 seconds left in the minor to Cicerelli. Podubny as the Caps change their penalty killing unit once again. Miller and Ridley back up. Long pass for Claude Lemieux off his stick. Sundstrom ridden off with a hard check there from Mike Ridley. Claude Lemieux chasing Bob Rouse who gets it to Ridley. Ridley to Miller. Caps have cleared the zone. Kelly Miller and Driver tie up. Terreri feeding it to Driver. Ahead to Sundstrom. Patrick Sundstrom, rink wide. Podubny couldn't take it. But stepping up there is Abilene, and he clears it into the Washington end. Langway wraps it around the boards for Ridley at center. Back on the ice is Cicerelli. Ridley and Kevin Hatcher. Here's Ridley now looking for Cicerelli. Cicerelli's got it, and he fired it wide. He is ducked there by Driver. And takes exception to that. Claude Lemieux has a word as he skates away. And the period comes to an end with the score. The Washington Capitals 2. The Devils no score. This is the Home Team Sports Television Network.